As we look upon our precious home from the vast expanse of the cosmos, we're often struck by its vibrant beauty and singular presence, this blue and green oasis shimmering against the backdrop of infinity. But there's something else that stands out, something much less beautiful. Our waste. Piles upon piles of trash that we create each and every day. From our kitchen trash cans to massive landfills, from plastic islands floating in our oceans to the thick, choking smog in our cities, our waste is a constant companion, and it's a problem that's only growing. And so, an audacious idea emerges. What if we dumped our trash into space? At first glance, it seems like an elegant solution. Space is, after all, vast and seemingly empty. Why not use it as a cosmic dumpster? But the reality, like many things in life, is much more complex and fraught with challenges. So, what are the logistics of actually sending our garbage into space? To start with, the waste would have to be collected, sorted, and prepared for launch. This process alone would require an unprecedented level of coordination and infrastructure. Then we need to consider the type of waste. Not all waste is created equal. Hazardous or radioactive waste poses significant risks. An accident during launch could result in devastating environmental consequences. Next, we must consider the rocket launches. Even with today's most advanced rockets, the payload capacity is limited. The Falcon Heavy, one of the most powerful rockets in operation, can carry about 64,000 kilograms, 141,000 pounds, to low Earth orbit. But here's the reality check. As of 2021, globally, we generated about 2.01 billion tons of municipal solid waste annually. Even if we could fit all of this waste into the payload of Falcon Heavy rockets, we'd need over 31 million rocket launches each year just to keep up with the trash we produce. That's more than 85,000 rocket launches every single day. Let's not forget the rocket fuel. The environmental cost of burning that much rocket fuel would be astronomical. Not to mention the fact that producing enough rockets and fuel for this operation would require an immense amount of resources and energy. The current cost of launching material into space is about $10,000 per pound, or about $22,000 per kilogram. But let's assume the advancements in technology will manage to lower the cost to $1,000 per pound, around $2,200 per kilogram, which is still a highly optimistic estimate. We're generating about 12.1 billion pounds of waste per day. So to launch one day's worth of global waste into space at $1,000 per pound would cost about $12.1 trillion. For reference, the estimated global GDP in 2021 was about $94 trillion. It's about 13% of the global GDP, and that's just for one day's worth of waste. Then, there's the environmental cost. Rocket propellants are made of different types of fuels, and when they're burned, they release greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide and water vapor directly into the atmosphere. The amount and type of emissions depend on the fuel. For instance, rockets that use liquid kerosene and liquid oxygen, like the Falcon 9 by SpaceX, release CO2 and water vapor when burned. Moreover, there are indirect effects as well. The production of rocket propellants and the construction of the spacecraft and launch infrastructure also consume energy and resources, contributing to overall emissions. Given these factors, it's fair to say that the greenhouse gas emissions from regularly launching rockets filled with waste would be significant and would further exacerbate climate change. Assuming we overcome all of these challenges, the question of where to put this garbage remains. If left in orbit around the Earth, we exacerbate the issue of space debris. Sending it further out into the solar system would require even more energy and present its own set of problems. What if we contaminate other celestial bodies with our waste? So, there's also an ethical dimension to consider. Do we have the right to pollute the cosmos as we have polluted our home? We already have space debris, also known as space junk, floating above our heads. 
orbiting our planet right now, there are millions of pieces of space junk. Defunct satellites, spent rocket stages, fragments from disintegration, erosion, and collisions. Estimations show there are about 130 million pieces of debris smaller than 1 centimeter, about 1 million pieces of debris between 1 and 10 centimeters, and around 35,000 pieces larger than 10 centimeters in orbit around the Earth. Traveling at speeds up to 28,000 kilometers per hour, 17,500 miles per hour, a relatively small piece of orbital debris can damage or destroy satellites and spacecraft. In a worst-case scenario, we could trigger what is known as the Kessler Syndrome, a theoretical situation where the density of objects in low Earth orbit is high enough that collisions between objects could cause a cascade. Each collision generates more debris, increasing the likelihood of further collisions and creating a potentially impassable barrier around our planet. Scientists and engineers are working on ways to track and remove space debris, but these efforts are in early stages and can't keep up with the rate at which the debris is being created. So, adding more waste to this already precarious situation would be extremely dangerous and counterproductive. Responsible space exploration and utilization demand that we consider the long-term sustainability of the space environment. Ultimately, the idea of throwing our waste into space is a distraction from the real issue. Our problem is not a lack of space for waste, it's the waste itself. It starts with us, the individuals, making conscious choices every day. Waste segregation is one of the first steps. By separating recyclable materials, organic waste, and non-recyclable items, we can ensure the right waste management strategy is applied to each type of waste. Reducing waste is another essential step. This means making conscious purchasing decisions, opting for products with less packaging, reusing items wherever possible, and fixing things instead of discarding them. Recycling is another important component of waste management. While not all waste can be recycled, a significant proportion can be, and this process helps to conserve natural resources and energy. Composting is a great way to manage organic waste. It reduces the amount of waste sent to landfills and creates a natural fertilizer for plants. On a larger scale, cities and countries can adopt zero-waste strategies. This involves designing products and processes to reduce the volume and toxicity of waste and materials, and to conserve and recover all resources instead of incinerating or landfilling them. Promoting clean energy production is also part of the solution. This reduces industrial waste and pollution and offers a sustainable path forward. Investment in research and development is key. We need to encourage the design of sustainable materials that can replace problematic materials, such as single-use plastics. Ultimately, the solution to our waste problem lies in a collective shift towards sustainable living. It requires concerted effort from individuals, industries, and governments. Only then can we hope to safeguard our blue-green jewel in the cosmos for generations to come. Our Earth is not just an island in the vast cosmic sea, it's our only home. And it's up to us to keep it clean, not just for us, but for all the generations yet to come. We don't inherit the Earth from our ancestors, we borrow it from our children. It's high time we remember this truth and take responsibility for our home. Don't forget to watch the video on the right and subscribe. Thanks for being part of Cosmonology.